olives in Gethsemane, he was praying for not his will, but God's will to be done. He was totally submissive to the, to the will of God, and it gave him the power, the faith, to finish his mission. That night he was arrested, uh, and he was taken to the court of the high priest. And guess who followed? His trusty disciple Peter, in stealth mode, started to follow Jesus from a distance. Jesus was standing in the courtyard of the high priest, being questioned in a kangaroo court. And Peter wanted to know what was going to happen to Jesus, his beloved teacher. So he hid among the people who were warming themselves around the fire. Maybe if we could image him in today's terms, he would be having this hoodie right over the top of his head, trying to not show himself. Maybe have a black mask as well, you know, big mask, so people will not recognize him. But faith has it, has it that there was a servant girl who saw and recognized Peter across from her. She was sitting across from Peter, and she could see through the shadows, through the fire, the layout of his face. And she said, you were one, you were one of them. You were with Jesus, who's being trialed right now. And Peter was startled. He didn't know how to react because everybody was exposed all of a sudden. So he denied, no, I don't know what you're saying. A little bit later, another person comes and recognizes Peter and says, you are one of them. You are a disciple of Jesus, aren't you? And Peter, again, his identity is revealed. And so he denies, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know this man. And he flees that scene. Well, an hour later, the Bible says, another person comes and confronts Peter. I think you are one of Jesus' disciples. You have this accent, Galilean accent. Oh no, Peter, Peter's accent betrayed him. And they knew he was Galilean, so he must have, he's not around here. He must be with Jesus. And at this moment, Peter was trembling and he was angry and he wanted to make his point in a loud voice. I have nothing to do with this man. And in another Bible, in the book of Mark, it says he swore and cursed even. If I know this man, you know, uh, I'd be cursed, I'd be damned. He's using these curse words and swearing that he doesn't know Jesus. But as if the crow had been waiting the cock crowed, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said long before, many hours ago, how Peter was going to betray Jesus before the cock crows three times. And sure enough, he looked at Jesus and their gazed crossed paths, crossed paths, and Jesus looked at him intently. And at that moment, Peter knew exactly what that gaze meant. And he broke down. He couldn't stand in the presence of his master. His master, knowing that he betrayed Jesus, he had to flee that scene. And it says he wept bitterly as he went. Peter must have thought to himself, how did I come to this? How did it come to this? I didn't mean to betray my master. I didn't mean those things that I said. I was startled. I was defensive. I didn't know what I did. And he started to regret his life, regret his words. And he experienced the most lowest point of his life. He had indeed betrayed his master. Our story goes on and talks about other betrayals too. How the soldiers betrayed justice and mistreated Jesus. They abused Jesus physically. It talks about how the high priest and uh, the religious leaders, they came to this verdict that this man is blasphemous, worthy to die. Even though Jesus says, I am the son of God, they did not believe him. In effect, Israel, the people of God, had rejected and betrayed the son of God. Our story today is about betrayal. Betrayal of Jesus. Did you enjoy today's story? Perhaps uh, for you, for us, who are so used to stories this age, 
with a lot of Hollywood stories and movies and novels, maybe a betrayal of a disciple of the teacher is not such a big surprise to some of us. But today's lesson, today's story tells us a very important lesson. We must remember that the Bible is focusing on Jesus Christ and not on Peter. Jesus is the real main character. If we look through that lens, we realize one very important fact from this story. It's the fact that our focus should not be on the betrayal of Peter, but on the gaze of Jesus Christ. As uh, the story, the passion story goes on, moves along, we find Jesus speaking less and less. Isn't it obvious he's getting tired and he's dying, right? So he speaks with this whole body. He speaks with actions. And in that respect, every behavior, every glance is very important. In verse uh, 62 of chapter 22, 61 of chapter 22, this is what it says. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the saying of the Lord. Jesus intentionally turned and looked at Peter. This word looked in the original is not to glance. It doesn't mean just to, oh, I happen to see something. I just, I think I saw something. It's not that kind of look. It is gazing. It is observing it is intentionally observing something. Jesus intentionally turned around and focused, fixed his eyes on his disciple, Peter. Surprisingly, we find the same word, look, this uh, special, special word, look, uh, look, in another part of the Bible that refers to Peter. It is found in John chapter 1. It is the encounter when Jesus encountered Peter and his name was changed. John chapter 1 verse 42 says, he brought Peter to Jesus. Jesus looked at him, same word here, looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John, but you shall be called Cephas, which means Peter, which means rock, which means solid. When Peter experienced the gaze of Jesus after his betrayal of Jesus, it reminded him of the same gaze that Jesus looked upon Peter for the very first time. That gaze of expectation, of hope, of vision, of love. It was as if Jesus was saying, you're going to be a great man of God. God has wonderful plans for you, and I love you. That was all in that gaze, that first encounter with Jesus. And now when Peter experienced the same gaze after his betrayal of his master, he was overwhelmed with emotion. And that's why he had to flee that scene and weep, weep bitterly. Through this experience, Peter realized something. He realized that he had changed so much over the years, yet Jesus had not changed. The gaze of Jesus meant, again, that Peter changed, but Jesus never changed one bit. That special gaze of Jesus meant Peter betrayed Jesus, but Jesus was expecting Peter to repent. The gaze of Jesus meant Peter's love was finished. His love for Jesus was done. But Jesus' love for Peter was just beginning. He was about to show the full extent of his love to Peter. Yes, the gaze of Jesus meant the world for Peter. And it becomes the stimulus for him to come back and be fully restored as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I believe Jesus, who died on the cross this week, is also turning around, turning towards us and gazing upon you and me. Gazing with that same love, gazing with that same hope, gazing with that same faith in us, expectation and vision for us. You are my son. You are my daughter. I love you. I have great plans for you. 
get up. You can do it. Jesus, on this holy week, 2,000 years ago, he thought of you and me. And he has the same gaze upon us today. Jesus who's risen, he's looking upon us with that same gaze of Peter, of love, of repentance, of vision. As a response to Jesus' gaze, let us fix our eyes on that Jesus who sees us with that gaze. Let us see ourselves in Jesus' eyes. And as we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ himself who sees us, we can dare to live the life of, of a one forgiven. We can dare to live a life of one who has a vision. We can dare to live as someone who has faith in our Lord. The Lord bless you on this Passion Tuesday and help let us fix our eyes on Jesus who gazes down upon us in total love. Amen. Would you pray with me? Let's pray tonight that uh, we would have the gaze of Jesus. We would see ourselves in the loving gaze of Jesus so we could be restored to Jesus. We can live in faith like Jesus and have the vision that he has for us. Let's pray tonight, right now, that we would have the gaze of Jesus in our hearts. I'll pray for us. Father God, we thank you for tonight's message that Jesus, despite knowing that Peter, despite knowing that we would betray you, you still loved us. You still carried the cross on the, world, on the road to suffering and you died for us. Father God, help us not to see ourselves with our own eyes, but help us to see ourselves in the loving eyes of Jesus, a person who has been forgiven, a person who has been loved, is being loved, a person who has a vision that is from Jesus. I pray that our prayers will be answered tonight as we pray in faith. Bless us. Help us to go deeper in our love for Jesus Christ this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.